Hello everybody, so welcome back to my channel. Today, as you guys might know, I am going to be in a part two of my Q&A video because on the first one I kind of realised that there was far too many questions to actually go through and answer so I'm just going to jump right into it. Okay so the first question is from Tiffany Eden over YouTube <laughs> and she asks, have you ever had any plastic surgery or have you considered it? No, I have never had any plastic surgery. I'm sure some people kind of think whenever you're a YouTuber, it kind of comes in the job description that you need to have something done. Um, but no, I haven't had any surgery and would I consider it? I would like to get plastic surgery. The only thing I would want done would be my lips done, but only the tiniest wee bit because like, like my lips aren't even that bad. I would like to get um like my boobs done. I wouldn't want them any bigger. I would probably just want them either completely removed because I hate them or a boob lift. I don't wear bras at all. I just, no. <laughs> I absolutely hate bras. I don't wear them. So therefore, because of that, um, I am living proof that not wearing a bra makes your boobs sag quite a bit. So because of that, I do have quite saggy boobs. Therefore, I would want a boob lift. So I think if I was going that far to get a boob lift, I probably would get like an implant in to keep it up, if you don't mind, because in saying that I still wouldn't wear a bra, I just don't do bras. So somebody else asked, are you a self-taught makeup artist and how long have you been with your boyfriend? So me and Kyle have been together for over five years and I am a self-taught I don't, I don't I don't want to say makeup artist because I'm not a makeup artist. But my makeup skills and what I know and how I do things, blah blah. Like I am self-taught and YouTube has also helped me with that. So Kelly Mac asked, are you ever going to come to the United States? I would love to go to America. Um, I definitely want to do nearly every state, especially the southern states. But yeah, I would love to. Oh, and you're from North Carolina. Oh. I'm so jealous. Did you ever get in trouble in school? <laughs> Obviously, you get into trouble now and again. Jesus, you know, you have to love a little when it comes to school. Um, I never got severely in trouble. I have to say, like, I was a good student. I didn't like to get in too much trouble because I loved the high school I went to. The teachers were absolutely fantastic. It was such a good school. But I have to say I never done anything really really bad whenever I was at school. One of the silliest things I think I've done was there was one day that me and my best friend at the time, like we just decided to go into school in our pyjamas. I don't know why we did it. I don't know where the idea came from. But yeah, we just decided to go to school one day in our pyjamas. Like, this just kind of shows how good our school was. Um, like, our headmaster, he found it funny. And, like, he was so laid back about it. But they actually ended up bringing my mum to come and get me and take me home. <laughs> okay, so, Zilora. Um, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong, but anyway, I know you anyway, Laura. <laughs> so she had asked, has anyone's attitude changed towards you since doing well on YouTube? Um, no, actually it hasn't. None of their attitude towards me has changed in a negative way or in a positive way, like nobody treats me any worse or nobody treats me any better. <sighs> but here's the sad thing. There's actually two things I've learned from being on YouTube and I'm going to answer one of them. It's really hard to not get emotional emotional talking about this because like, I don't care and I don't want to care but at the same time I'm human and I do care. Since doing YouTube I have realised that the people that are closest to you, like the people that know you personally and that see you all the time or on a daily basis and weekly and stuff, they are not going to support you the way that you might have thought that they would support you. It's the people that don't know me, such as most of you watching me, will support me more than people that know me. There is people that I know of that live around my area, um, like the Triangle area. If you're not from here, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. But there's people that know me, but don't know me personally. And I know them from just living around this area and they support me more than the people I actually know and that know me. For example, like this 
question came from a girl I went to school with. Like, Laura, I think you were a couple, like, a year younger than me. I know you watched my videos and, like, because I've actually seen you comment on quite a few of them. And, like, we don't know each other personally, but I know you support me more than someone I know. It's very, very sad and it's hard to not let it get to you. Nobody, like, nobody asks me about my YouTube. You know, like, people that I'm friends with, people I work with, or, like, even family members and stuff. Like, nobody asks me about my YouTube channel. And it's like, that's fair enough, but the way I kind of see it is, if they don't ask, they don't care. Don't get me wrong, like, people aren't going to ask me about my YouTube channel, and I'm not expecting them to ask me about my YouTube channel every time I see them. It's actually nice, now and again, for someone to actually say to you, Emma, you're doing well. You know, it's nice for now and again for someone to actually, that's close to me, to acknowledge that. Like the we collaboration thing I done there with the eyelashes that was named after me. Um, not one person apart from my boyfriend's brother congratulated me on them lashes. Not one person that I'm friends with. Not one person in my family apart from my mum and my dad. Not one person I work with. Nobody mentioned anything to me, not one of them, but yet people on my Instagram and my Snapchat and my YouTube are th that are people I don't know congratulated me and were proud of me. That to me is, is something really special and it does, it, it fills my heart so much and it's just absolutely incredible. But at the same time, it's like, what about all these people that know me? And that's when it kind of hits home and that's whenever it's hard. Okay, so moving on. The next question is from Pros Kill or Pro Skill um, over YouTube. And they had asked, what do your family think about you being on YouTube? And this is kind of going back to what I was literally just talking about. My family don't really talk to me about it either. Like my mom finds it really interesting and just, cool you know what like she's just fascinated by it but my other family like I don't really see much of my family to be honest for them to actually mention it to me but I just kind of know that if I'm with them or something they wouldn't mention it anyway um my family would be very much university and college orientated and I didn't go to university and I didn't go to college and I'm, I'm pretty sure that they find it cool but like Actually, not one of my family members has ever mentioned it to me, like, like ever. <laughs> um, but it also comes into the fact that, like, I don't actually see my entire family all the time. Okay, so I also got asked, is YouTube your only profession and do you do anything else during the day? So, obviously, you must be new to my channel, but I am a hairdresser, so that is basically my job. Um, eventually, hopefully, this will be my career. I only work part-time as a hairdresser, um, so what I do on my days where I'm off, I do YouTube. Tara Lowe asked, how much would you say you spend on makeup and what is your most expensive makeup buy? It kind of depends and varies on how much money I have. Um, I would say on a good month, I would spend at least 200, 250 pounds on makeup. But that, as I say, kind of varies on how much money I have and how crazy I go. Like, obviously, there are some months where I buy nothing. My most expensive makeup buy? I don't actually know. I think, actually, a Dior highlighter I bought. Um, this one here, which isn't my shade, which is crap. This was £35, which isn't that expensive. I don't like to spend a lot of money on lavish items. I'm kind of the type of person that I would like, if I have £50, I would rather go to a drugstore and get loads of things for £50. Whereas some people might think like, oh, I can buy this one thing for £50. Whereas I sometimes don't see the logic in that. So sometimes I'll splurge. Mm -hmm. Just kind of depends on the bank balance, you know. Um, but to date, this is probably the most expensive thing I've bought. This is from Raven 
Lamar. So what is an overrated product that you personally hate? The only thing I can think of is probably the Benefit brow products, like the like the brow pencil, the brow things, and just all them products. Um, it's not that I necessarily hate them products because they are really really popular but I just find that they don't work for me. Okay, so this necessarily isn't a question but I'm going to kind of bring it up anyway and hope that you're watching. So this is just like a comment slash question whatever from DJ Hitch and she has said hey I subscribed a few months ago love your channel and how humble you are since she asked for feedback and open questions there is just one thing I like watching makeup tutorials with my young daughter um, when I watch your videos I have to wait until late because of the f-bomb in your videos. Um, is this a bad thing that I brought this up? Although I love your channel. Um, so in case nobody knows the f-bomb means f-u-c-k. <laughs> um, no that's not a bad thing that you brought that up. Thank you so much for the comment and thank you for subscribing to my channel. Um, this has actually been brought up to me before by my mother. <laughs> Because obviously like my mum sometimes does watch my videos and she actually mentioned this to me not that long ago and she was like Emma Like I'm sure there are so many young girls watching your videos. Can you try not to use that language? I Try not to curse in my videos as much as I did because since my mum did bring that up to me It was kind of like well That's actually quite true and I actually know that I do have a young audience as well so Thank you so much for bringing that up and I'll try to watch my language. <laughs> These questions are from Michelle Johnson. So hello Michelle, how are you? Um, so she had asked, do you have any plans to come to the US? And if so, would you do a meet and greet with your fans? Yes, definitely have plans to come to the US but not anytime soon because of the money and stuff. I would love to do a meet and greet with my United States subscribers and stuff. I don't like to call them fans because that just makes me feel a wee bit uneasy because I'm just normal here. I sometimes find that like I'm not a big YouTuber, like I'm not a big channel so therefore I kind of find that not very many people know me, not very many brands know me so I just think that it would just be a wee bit awkward. The next one is from Morgan Rowe on Instagram. YouTube. Why did I keep on getting this completely mixed up? So she asked, what was your makeup like in high school? Oh my god. So here's the thing. Whenever I was in high school, um, I was basically the only one that had like the bleach blonde hair, obviously, and I always wore a lot of makeup. More makeup than I should have, to be honest. Like I remember my form teacher, like the girls would have went in first and then the boys would have went in, but she was always standing at the door and nearly every morning I was like, Emma, toilets. Emma, toilets. Emma, toilets. <sighs> Emma, toilets. <laughs> you know, and like every day I kept on coming in with makeup on and makeup on and makeup on. But I, but like it wasn't heavy, if you know what I mean. Like I, I just wore like a lot of foundation and just like mascara and that was it. But whenever you're at school, like there's no need for it, if you know what I mean. It wasn't as if I wore like big black eyeliner, you know, like eyebrows drawn on, like big blusher cheeks and stuff. And she had also asked if you could collab with any makeup brand, which one and why? Probably Colourpop, actually. Um, I think the reason being is because they do my favourite highlighters and I am a highlighter junkie and I love their lip products. I'm wearing one of their lip products today. I love their matte lips, their satin lips and I really like their Super Shock shadows as well. Um, I kind of like their concealer but I kind of find that it oxidises on me. But anything that I have tried from Colourpop I really do enjoy and like. I also think I would collab with Colourpop because I find that the quality of their makeup is, is really really good and also the fact that they are relatively cheap in my opinion. Like they're not really expensive or whatever, they are reasonably priced. Everybody would be able to afford to buy my collab. Um, so yeah. <laughs> So she had also asked if there is anywhere in the world I could live, where would it be and what is my biggest fear? Anywhere in the world I would live would actually be where I live, funny enough. <laughs> like I know there's so many like, 
beautiful places in the world and naturally beautiful places in the world but I personally think that Ireland is definitely one of those places that is a naturally beautiful place. Everybody loves the Irish don't they? <laughs> uh, and it's just a really nice place to live in my opinion. Well obviously I'm going to have that opinion because I live here. And what is my biggest fear? Spiders. Spiders. I would rather have a rat's ass in my mouth than a spider crawl over my fingers. So Kelly Kid 589 asks, did you find it hard to put yourself out there and if so, how did you deal with it? No, I didn't find it hard at all because um, I think I mentioned this in my previous Q&A, that one thing that I actually like about myself and I'm thankful for is um, I'm the type of person that I do believe in myself quite a lot. Putting myself out there, I believed in myself that I could do it and I was confident enough with myself and how I portray myself and my makeup work whatever I was confident enough in it even though nobody's perfect and I'm not perfect in it I think you kind of have to really understand that you just have to be yourself you know there's people that's going to like you and there's people that's not going to like you that's just life really but no like I definitely didn't find it hard putting myself out there this question is from Mandy Page one two my mom's called Mandy <laughs> Um, and she asks, will you make a collab with a makeup brand or create your own makeup? So basically, I've actually had quite a lot of these questions. So will I ever make a collab with a brand? I would love to. I'm definitely open for suggestions. This is the kind of the thing with makeup brands because I'm a small YouTuber and I'm a small channel. It's kind of a wee bit crappy because... Um, because I'm a small channel and not very many people know me, obviously this makeup brand isn't going to invest in me. Um, and that kind of sucks, but in, you kind of have to think in like the, the business side of it, if that makes sense, because it is crabby, but whenever you're in this industry and in this community, you just kind of have to realise that brands, you know, they think of the money and they think of, you know, the products that they're going to sell and what is going to sell you know they need to even see you as a product to sell um yeah it's nothing to do with your personality or your talent or whatever it's all about numbers in my opinion but yeah so hannah leonard asked are you moving away from hairdressing completely to do makeup or will you maintain the two at the minute i am maintaining the two and from now until further notice, I am maintaining the two. Um, I am thankfully and luckily enough to say that I am kind of financially stable to leave my hairdressing job. Eventually, I have spoke about this in the previous video as well, um, eventually this will hopefully become my career and I will eventually go up hairdressing to do YouTube full time. So Paige King, also off Instagram, asked, Sorry if this is too juicy. Weirdest place you've had sex? Um, probably my best friend's mum's bed. Not that juicy or saucy or kinky or I'm not that much of a little minx. Like I know that is actually quite gross to think of it but that was a long time ago. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so Leah of Snapchat asked, is YouTube a big pressure on your life or does it bring something enjoyable to your life? Um, no, it doesn't bring pressure to my life because this is just something I do as a hobby currently. Um, so it just kind of means that because this isn't my full-time job, it just means that, you know, as harsh as may, this may sound, I will upload whatever I want to upload. It's not as if I'm stuck to a schedule or a routine. I film when I'm free and have time. I upload whenever I have the video edited and I'll just upload it willy-nilly whenever I want. I enjoy doing this. Like obviously I wouldn't be still doing this nearly two years later if I didn't enjoy it. So I just kind of find that like as time's going on like I'm kind of building like a bond between like you guys. That's probably one of the most enjoyable parts of being on YouTube and doing YouTube and it's probably the most rewarding part of it is the fact that um, you actually get to build a relationship with you know like people online like people that are supporting you through this and basically making your dreams come true because let's just face it like these big YouTubers and even me to where I've got now, anybody wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the subscribers and you guys watching the videos. I kind of hope that kind of answers that question. 
Sorry if that was a wee bit lame. <laughs> this comes to the end of this video. Thank you so, so much for watching again. I thank you so much for the continued support on my channel. I hope to see you guys all in my next video. And until then, take care of yourselves. And I'll see you later.